Okay, this is kind of casual, hanging out for a minute, but uh, today was would have been Tony's 50th, uh, 50th birthday, so I was just feeling like doing something for him. I had a little bit of time, so I started doodling out, just something quick of Dominator. Um, so, anyway... Is what it is. Uh, miss the guy. And, uh, was actually hanging out with um, another comic book buddy, um, talking about Tony a bit, and, you know, that sort of thing. While I was doing this, and then uh, dude had to go, so I figured I would just throw this open and kind of video some of it, and uh, you know sharing that because this it's kind of a, a thing you know, like what Tony and I used to do a lot was because um, he you know I, I'm in Cincinnati in the United States and he was in in England and um, we would throw up in Skype at these ungodly hours of night and share our screens with each other and you know talk about work and stories and stuff while we were working and um, so you know he's not here now for me to do that with and that sucks it sucks a lot so I just thought you know in, in thinking about him on his 50th birthday I'd throw this open with you whoever you are and uh, so, you know, you folks out there watching this kind of get to be like a quiet Tony for me right now. So, uh, I promised myself I'm not going to, like, crack. <laughs> so, if I get quiet for a minute, it's just because I'm collecting myself a little. But, um,. So yeah, this is this is Dominator, and for those who don't know, uh, Dominator was kind of Tony's life's work. It was his his character, his baby that he worked on. Uh, he did comics, um, worked on them, had some really cool people involved from time to time. I know, like there was some stuff that he had Liam Liam Sharp, I think, contributed to back in the day, some concept art and different things like that pretty sure Simon Bisley worked on some stuff at one point, like some concepts and sketches and stuff, because all these dudes over there, they're really lucky actually, you know, because it seems like there's this community of guys over there who all sort of know each other and you know, I I would love to be or have been a part of that, but you know, I'm here in the States don't get me wrong, I love my country and all that but, uh, you know, there's definitely something to be said for being a country that's physically smaller like that and you, you, know, you run into people more I guess or whatever whatever I don't know I think about that stuff too much and probably yammer on too much about it point being um, you know it was uh, Dominator back in the early 90's early mid 90's Tony uh, it was it was written he was partnered up with Alan Grant on it, and uh, and they managed to get it picked up by Kodansha in Japan, and apparently it was like the first, I don't know, the first Western comic that was picked up by a Japanese company. I, I don't know the history of it specifically, don't really even care. What I know is it was fun stuff, and Tony loved it. The character was his baby. Then uh, Tony and I met. We started getting to know each other online probably around 2003. And folks who know me from the 3D side of things, you know, you you might be familiar with like my work for Poser, um, Daz Studio, animation stuff I've done. But I also did comics. Actually, that's always been my first love. It's where my career as an artist started. 
But uh, Tony found me actually through 3D stuff because he used a lot of 3D elements in making his his comics and eventually Dominator animations and all that kind of stuff. And so he he um, found because I, I make a lot of monsters and that sort of thing, and he dug that stuff, and he found his way to me through that, and we got to know each other, and then. Um, series of interesting events take place where we get to actually meet in person and spend a lot of time for the week of the San Diego Comic Con in 2005 hanging out and it just solidified what was already this like growing friendship that we had and uh, and we started working really closely then on a number of things and uh, so we developed this um, this ongoing relationship that now, you know, it would have been 13 years he and I had known each other. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, it, it really grew beyond just the work into, you know, dude was one of my best friends. Probably one of the best friends I've ever had. Uh, I loved him like a brother. And, uh, When I met him, he was uh, in recovery from, uh, or he was doing pretty well actually when I met him, and he had been fighting, though he'd been fighting mesothelioma and a bunch of other crap for a long time. When I met him, he'd already lost some organs to it. Um, you know, he made jokes about how he was a cyborg because of this plastic stuff they had shoved inside him for whatever reason, and, you know, he had a really great attitude about it. And, uh, but he fought with that kind of, you know, for forever, since long before, you know, long before I got to know him, it was always a part of things, knowing Tony, was that he was fighting this illness, and, uh, yeah, it, um, you know, it took him out of commission at one point for a really long time, you know, a couple of years, where didn't hear as much from him as I wanted, and he was just really, really sick, and all kinds of personal problems and stuff that go with that, and, um, so, um, you know, I, I've told people this before, that, like, some of the, some of the coolest stuff I've gotten to do in my career came through Tony, came because of Tony, you know, get me involved in one project or another, or introducing me to someone who yielded something somewhere else. And so, anyway, as I was just sitting here, you know, there was a a pretty cool thing I watched some video of from earlier today where uh, um, his sister Fran and some folks got together. Uh, kind of had a little little celebration of what would have been his birthday. It's always difficult for me when I see that stuff. It's like, I want so bad to be there because, like I said, dude was like a brother. And, uh, and I, I can't. <laughs> and that sucks. It really sucks. So... I thought, you know what, I can't be there, but maybe I can kind of share this day with him in a weird way through through folks who may watch this and may remember him, and, you know, so it's like, I don't know, it's just seem like the most appropriate thing to me was to do something Dominator related and kind of try to share that. He, uh, he and I had been working on some new Dominator stuff when his illness kicked in really hardcore again. And, um, uh, don't know what, if anything will ever come of that, 
but um, yeah, it was. <sighs> Dominator was his baby, and it was an honor to get to work on it as much as I did with him on stuff. So, I thought, you know, I'll uh, do something Dominator related here. did a lot of 3D stuff for Tony. And I think it was actually a long time. It was like a number of years working together before you know, before one day we're talking and I'm showing him on screen some, some comic book stuff, some traditional comic stuff. Because he knew I was a comic book fan. But then I showed him some comic book pages and he's like he's like, I didn't know you did this. We should do something together. I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah, we, we really should. <laughs> and, you know, over time, you know, it's just, it's also weird, we ended up getting plans together to work on some new Dominator stuff, and worked out all kinds of cool story ideas, and, man, I was really looking forward to, uh, to working with him, and, you know, on the new stuff, you know, putting some new spins on the character, taking some stories into uh, some, maybe a little bit more, like, sophisticated directions than, than it had been in the past. Um, his, the, I can't really talk about it because I don't want to, I don't know if anything will ever come of it, so I don't want to share it openly, but the concept that he was working with me on right before he passed was so freaking cool and so much different than what um, had normally been done with the character. And it was it was neat because it it involved the character it evolved the character's past, but in really unique, cool ways. And yeah. So there was that. And I know he was excited by the new ideas and you know, it was just, it's a thing that happens when you're a writer, an artist, and all the stuff that we do, you know, you, you, you create stuff, and you fall in love with it, and you get excited at the things you, you know, feel like you can do with it, and one day, you're not there anymore. So from time to time I like to pull out you know some dominator stuff do a little bit of dominator drawing and I don't know just do some stuff with it because drawing dominator is kind of like having Tony back around for a little bit Hope you dig the character, and uh, you know if you're not familiar with the character already, um, I honestly don't even know where you would find it anymore. Uh, I really, you know, I'd like to to find out, you know, what if anything is in place to uh, you know give his work some kind of a home somewhere.
because it was it was fun stuff. fun stuff for a minute just getting into the whole process of doing something like this was a real character himself. Yeah. Fun guy. Super cool dude to be around. Tons of great ideas. Him passing back in February has been probably the hardest thing I've had to deal with this year. And one of the hardest things I've dealt with in a very, very long time. There were plenty of times back through the years, and everyone goes through their their trials and their problems and all that. And, you know, just age-wise, Tony was actually about the same difference in age to me as my oldest brother. And he was somebody who I could call on and did from time to time when things got rough or, or I just needed to talk to somebody or there was frustration or dude really was there and um, you know any 
anytime he could help me in some way he would he was always a great sounding board for artistic stuff and It's been weird these past few months not talking to him. I actually still, for a while there, messaged, sent messages through on Skype. When, uh, you know, like, it's like I, I knew he wasn't there, but it was just... This was how I talked to Tony. So, yeah. messaging me, but I, I really have no desire to stop right now. Just kind of want to focus on doing this. things he and I had in common, shared a lot, it was always nice having somebody else to talk to who was into that stuff, I'm not somebody who makes a ton of friends <laughs> super easily, and uh, Tony was, was pretty cool. To, uh, to talk about how someday he was going to come to the States again. And when he did, he'd come stay at my house for a while. I was going to take him and show him some places, some cool stuff, caves and things I know from back home, where I come from. And there's a lot of cool stuff like that we wanted to do together. Just didn't work out. say, you know, if you have friends who you know primarily online, or, or, you know, like maybe you've known them in real life, but you've mostly just talked to them online or whatever, don't neglect them. Don't take that for granted. I think it's easy to take people granted for general, but you know, in this weird world now with all this digital crap everywhere, I think it's even easier because they're just accessed through God, that line's killing me. Accessed through these devices and you know, it's just
Tony used to like to watch me do this stuff in Manga Studio. Like I, I like doing it traditional too. I like you know using pens and using uh, brushes and quills and all that cool stuff. But uh, yeah, he always got a kick out of watching me do this stuff in Manga Studio. It was one of those things he get to do. Is he wanted. He'd always say, oh, you know, mate, one day one day we're going to take some time and you're going to show me this stuff at Manga Studio, mate. Yeah, I do the worst British accent ever. and He would have joked about that, too. If he heard me do what I just did, he would have laughed his ass off at that. would have laughed at that. So yeah, this is this is for Tony, and uh, just kind of remembering my friend. Zoom out and take a look. Not bad. Sometimes I'll move around to different parts. Just get tired of looking at one section for a while. It's one of the weirdest things about getting older is having people die. Like, it's one thing when older people, parents, grandparents, whatever, die. It's sad, too, but you know, when people die and you feel like they were older and they got to live a little bit, it's at least easier to kind of accept. But when somebody dies who is close to your age, and you were close to them. I find it is jarring, to say the least. I know Tony passing kind of set me on a different path with a few things. It was one of the big uh, motivators for me and actually really busting my chops to start losing some weight and getting myself back in better shape. You know, I, I don't know, I just, I didn't have, don't have the health problems he had to deal with, but it just made me think, you know what, I should probably take a little better care of myself. And, uh, I'd probably go 
goes for a lot of us. This video is going to run. I'm not really worrying about it too much. You know, it's just it is what it is. And uh, to uh, Alan and Fran and all the good folks close to Tony on the other side of the pond if you see this you know my best wishes go out to you guys you know I wish I could meet you all in person hang out sometime I'd, I'd really love to come over there and visit it's one of the things Tony and I talked about a lot all the places that he wanted to show me over there we kind of wanted to reciprocate you know he's going to come over and I was going to show him some things in Kentucky and he'd show me some things around Brighton and maybe London which would be really cool for me I mean it's always it always seems like it's way cooler for somebody from the United States to go over there than it is for somebody from over there to come over here so, but, uh, anyway. Yeah. So, uh, I watched the, uh, the th some of the, the f video that was taken from the, uh, a little birthday celebration they held for him it was pretty cool. I'd love to have been there. It's good to know, you know, there's people who were kind of keeping his memory alive, and you know, that's just that's just cool. I don't know if Tony ever realized the effect he had on so many people. But that was there. It's good to see, you know, that it's appreciated. Tony would be pleased to see his character, you know, moving on or living on in some way. Somebody keeping the damn thing going.
You might have heard my wife just now. That was, uh... I hope not. I actually hope that wasn't heard. But if it was, I will. done actually funny there's so many things regarding Tony that I wish I could talk about but I don't want to <sighs> I don't want to overstep bounds or get into things that are private and it sucks because there's some of it that's really cool and some of it that was just like like there are things that kind of show what a cool guy he was that you actually can't really... It, it's weird how that works. Like, sometimes, you know, when you're friends with somebody, there's there's aspects of things that you can't always share. You can't always talk about. Um, you know. Tony adored his niece and nephew. I can say that talked about them a lot, so Fran, yeah, <laughs> you know, you should know you're really lucky to have a, have him as a brother. Just remembering my buddy. I think he would have liked this. in the background. He used to laugh at the dogs. Sometimes he'd say funny things. Like if I if I had him out on speaker where the dogs could hear, he would talk to them and they would bark back and it was funny. Dude loved animals. Loved his cat.
So yeah, let's uh, quick a quick piece remembering Tony on his fiftieth birthday. So uh, somewhere out there, I uh, hope you're looking down. And you see this, bud. Uh, we love you. We miss you. <laughs>